Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are in episode number 120 and today we're going to be going over the Views Data Export module. The Views Data Export module is a module that will allow you to export large amounts of data sets or data from your views. You can export them in CSV files, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Doc, Text, or XML. And this is useful if you want to provide either yourself or users of your Drupal website the ability to export data from your various content types or in anything that can be displayed using views. Before we get started, as always, I'm Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. You can also go to codecardia.com and sign up for the newsletter. As always, or at least as it has been recently, Drupalize.me is today's sponsor. If you haven't checked them out yet, please do so because they provide some great Drupal training videos along with jQuery training and they have all different types of topics, a bunch of free videos so go ahead and give them a look and use CK20FEB as the coupon code and you get 20% off. Let's go ahead and get started. So I have the module already downloaded and installed on this test Drupal site as you can see, views data export. I'm using the 7.x 3.0 beta 6 version. And it's really pretty simple to get started. So I have a bunch of just, uh, uh, just added in default random content here using the devel generate module. So I have a bunch of articles. I'm going to go ahead and create a view. And we're going to allow exporting of this view into a CSV and a Microsoft Excel format just so we can take a look at how that looks and how that works. So I'm going to create a new view. We'll call this one export example. I'm going to show content of type article. We'll allow it to create a page. So we'll go continue and edit. And I'm going to select to show fields here just to build out of the very basic view so you can see if you have a view that you start with what you can then do. I will go ahead and show it in a table format just to make it easier. There's a title field. We'll add the body field as well as the author UID and the path, the post date, and the NID, just so we have some data that we can export. We'll go ahead and leave. We'll trim the body to keep it relatively small, but you wouldn't have to, of course. We'll leave the rest of the stuff at the default, and that should at least give us a, a starting point. As you can see, if you look down here, you can see that the data is being dropped into a table format. I'm going to give this a label. So the title label will now show up down below. And now you have your simple view that's just a table format view, it displays a title, the author user ID, uh, a trimmed section of the body based on the number of characters, node ID, path, and post date. So the goal is to allow users or yourself to export this data. Go ahead and save this. And the next step is going to be adding a new display onto this view. And as you can see, there's a data export display that you can add onto this view. So we're going to go ahead and click that. As soon as we do that, you'll see that it comes up with a new display. It has various formatting options, so you can select CSV file, doc, text, XLS, or XML. We'll leave it at the CSV file for now. You can select settings, so you can have it set as a file, or you can have it set as a feed. We'll go ahead and say we want to provide it as a file. Select the separator whole bunch of different options that you can look at different character encodings you can make use the first row as a header so you can look through those various options there and you can give this a path I'll go ahead and say export example CSV you can also attach it to 
the actual page. You want to make sure you attach it so you can actually see the link. You can select whether or not this should be batched. And what this does is if you have a large amount of data, you may want to go ahead and select to batch this. And this is going to, instead of trying to download the entire chunk of data or all of the rows at one time, or export all of it into a CSV file in this case, it's going to batch it up into uh, various segments so it's going to make it less memory intensive and it's just going to be better especially for larger data sets. For this case I'm not going to use a batch because it's not over a thousand rows it's relatively small only 300 so we should be fine but just keep in mind that's an important setting especially if you're exporting large amounts of data. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and I will click here to view the page see the data is here and you'll also notice this link at the bottom so this is what this views display that we added for data export does it adds this little icon here I click this and you'll notice that it downloads this CSV file I click to open it and depending on what type of uh, spreadsheet software or how you generally open your CSV files on your system it's going to open it up as you can see it's exported the data You'll notice it's only showing me 10 items, even though I have much more than 10 items. So what I will be able to do here is if I come back into this view, I can simply edit the view, come into the data export, and we'll actually we'll come into the page. Instead of a pager, we can go ahead and select zero here. So it's going to show all the items. We'll save that. It'll come back and view the page. Now you can see it's a much longer page. I open up the CSV. actually need to set the pager on that display so it actually separates out the two displays so the page display is not necessarily going to be exactly the same as the export display so you can display a set number of items on the first the actual page but you can actually export a different number of items so here's where I can actually select what shows up in the data export versus the page shows up how much you're actually going to display when you're viewing the page so right now I set this to show all on the page but the data export is still set to 10 items so keep in mind that these can be set independently of each other now when, as soon as I change this to zero I can go ahead and re-export and it is going to export all the rows that I have in the database rather than just the first 10 so now when I open this up I will see much more than 10 as you can see there's about 300 or so in there so we're going to go ahead and just show how you can export in one more format and then you should be able to take the idea and run with it and use it to export any different type of data that you may need. So I'm going to add another data export display. Again if you need to change the number of items you can set that to zero to show all items. You can also select this item or the second option here to just display all items. Either way will work we're going to change this to an XLS file so this would be an Excel format you can provide it as a file if you want or as a feed instead of a file for download now we can go ahead and save this I actually have to make sure I give it a path first of course so we're going to give it a views export XLS. Make sure we attach it to our page. Save it and we should be able to come back to the main page and see another icon down at the bottom. So now you can see I can export either a CSV or an XLS file. I can add as many different data export views displays onto this view as I need to. So I can have a text file or a doc or an XML and I can of course just click it and export to a file 
so I have an easy way to download the data that's being displayed in the view. Keep in mind that even the, the columns don't necessarily have to be identical. So if I wanted to add an additional column to one of these exports, I can do that and it will show up in the export but doesn't necessarily have to show up in the view. So if, for instance, in this XLS I also wanted to add whether or not it was published. I will actually, let me remove that for a second. I will make sure I override so it's only going to be adding it to this display. And I will find the published option again. So as you can see on this display only there's a published option on the page if I click on page there is no published option so I'll save this come back to the view itself you'll notice there is no published column however if I come down to the bottom and export to XLS and open this up you'll notice that there is a published column. So just keep in mind, as we ran into in the first case with the pagers, everything is independent of each other because they're just different views displays. So what you display on the page doesn't necessarily have to be identical in the number of columns or the number of rows displayed when you actually export the data using one of the various data export formats. So really it's pretty simple. It's a very easy way to export your data off your Drupal site using views so go ahead and try it out I'm sure you can find many uses for it on your Drupal sites thanks again to Drupalize.me for sponsoring this episode of the Daily Dose of Drupal and thanks for watching we'll see you next time